Hello, this is Colin, and today's tea is Merlin's Magic. And I'm going to continue talking about the early days of tea in England. In 1660, Thomas Garway opened the first tea shop in London. And of course, tea at this time was still quite expensive, so of course it pays to advertise. And uh, this, in part, I'm going to quote from a broadsheet that Garway published at the time about tea that the virtues and excellencies of this leaf and drink are many and great it is evident and manifest by the high esteem and the use of it especially in late years among the physicians and knowing men in france italy holland and other parts of christendom not to mention china um now once again we see how the europeans are treating uh, tea uh, as a medicinal drink, particularly for the elderly. Ah, oh, that's good for me. <clears throat> but uh, it, I think what really established tea in England was probably the Restoration. Now, for many years, the uh, England had been Britain. England had been ruled by the Commonwealth, which is basically a puritanical military dictatorship under Oliver Cromwell. When he passed away, it wasn't long before the people in England decided, oh, screw this, we're going to have some fun. And they invited the royals back from exile in Europe. So Charles II became king. With him, he brought his wife, uh, queen, uh, Catherine of Braganza of Portugal. Now, the Portuguese had been importing tea for a long time, since the early 16th century, perhaps even before the Dutch. So Catherine would have actually grown up with tea not as a medic medicinal drink, as, as more as a drink of choice. So, with Catherine brought a cask of tea. And the way tea developed, it was um, in the upper classes in England, is that it was not prepared in a kitchen. It was not served in a dining room. It was not served with, with a meal. What tea was, is that it was in a lady's antechamber, by her bedchamber. She would have a little room where she would invite her closest friends. And it was the woman herself, the princess or the host, who would make and serve the tea. The, not only was the tea so expensive that you didn't want the servants handling it. I mean, tea at this time was actually kept under lock and key in a cupboard. But also it was a way of showing off one's elegance and refinement refinement and class by not only being able to serve tea well, it was also the fact that tea was surrounded by all these wonderful imports from Asia, um, China, porcelain from China, uh, teapots from uh, India, from, from Japan, uh, tea tables from Java. It was a way of showing off how much money you had and how refined you were. And of course, most of the people who it was almost exclusively female at first that these that would go to these chambers for these very intimate little tea parties and they would serve little you know little cakes and, and things but um increasingly tea was becoming seen as a domestic drink one that was served in intimate moments with a small group of friends while coffee continued to be much more of a public drink where one went to a coffee shop to gossip and to slander and <laughs> to get the latest news. Of course, the fact that women were not allowed into coffee shops in England helped to promote the, uh, the, the image of tea as a domestic drink served in, um, by a lady in intimate surroundings. Something that, sort of a reputation that tea has never actually entirely shaken off but, um, once again, I think that's enough for today. So that's uh, today's tea for today, and I'll talk to you later. Cheers.